Hello, I'm Nurse Murphy. Join me in tackling your next generation NCLEX preparation. Today, we'll be doing a standalone trend item. I'd like to first draw your attention to the NCSBN organization developed a test blueprint that they post online. And here's your URL for that. Feel free to access it one day and really go through what their plan is to find ways to capture examples of you using your clinical judgment when answering test questions. Within client needs of the national exam, we have different categories. Today, I'd like to highlight risk reduction of risk potential. It's on page 19 of this URL document. And understand, it's 9 to 15 percent of your NCLEX questions. Here are some examples of what reduction of risk potential is. Again, thinking you as a nurse in your first years of nursing are demonstrating your own ability for clinical judgment by reducing the likelihood that clients will develop complications or health problems related to their existing conditions, related to any of our treatments or procedures. You're on the lookout for that. You are going to be able to demonstrate that you can assess and respond to changes and trends in clients' vital signs, changes and trends in clients' lab results, changes and trends in clients' ADLs. You'll perform testing within your scope of practice, doing EKGs and glucose monitoring, and showing your clinical judgment in response to having collected that data. You're monitoring results of diagnostic testing and intervene as needed. We don't just leave um, out of range issues alone. We have to, uh, re it requires further investigation. You'll demonstrate there might be actually, let's just say here, obtain blood specimens or obtain other specimens. It may very well be you have to place the procedure in the proper order from the answer options they provide. And we need you in your demonstration of clinical judgment to recognize trends and changes in client condition and intervene as needed. So if you were to go to this document, page 19, it's listed there as I have extracted here. So introducing you to your client in this standalone trend test item, the nurse cares for a 71-year-old retired fireman admitted for COPD exacerbation, no known allergies. We are provided on the left panel with clinical information and nurse's notes, and we'll use that information to answer the question in the right panel. So let's spend the time, and I think this is one of the objectives of my videos, is to show you the benefit of spending a few moments immersing yourself in the provided information. Essentially, they're saying, if you look at the information, you likely know the answer. So the flow sheet has parameters for temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, pulse oximetry, and then oxygen, supplemental oxygen status. At the 0800 hour, the 0900 hour, and the 10 a.m. hour. So we see our temperatures were elevated really from the start, and your national exam, next generation, will show the temperature in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. Heart rates, you know, respiratory rates, you know, normal ranges, blood pressures. JNC7 asks us to keep that systolic less than 140. JNC8 says let's keep it less than 150 for individuals over the age of 65. So you can see two of those systolics are elevated more than we need. Uh, pulse oximetry, well, with the COPD, or you start to say, well, where do they want it? It really is wonderful when you have an order set that tells you where to keep your oxygen range. And the oxygen patient came in on room air, then was placed on two liters nasal cannula, um, increased and decreased. So in our nurse's notes, these actually correspond, notice the 0800, 0900, and 10 a.m. These brief writings will correspond with our flow sheet. So 0800 received on room air, complaining of shortness of breath, placed on nasal cannula at two liters. And you probably remember in our fundamentals, in our COPD exacerbation patients, we do not want to give them too much oxygen 
they require a specific level of hypoxia as the drive to take the next breath. Albuterol nebulizer was tolerated well, positioned in high Fowler's, just to optimize that chest expansion and drop the diaphragm. Auscultated wheezes, all lobes. O900, increase the oxygen to 2.5 liters. And of course, now your brain says to you, your clinical judgment prompts you to see, well, what happened at O900? And you see um, that that oxygen is 91%, but that was in response to being on 2.5 liters. And then you drop over to O800, and you see that pulse ox was 88 and only went up to 89 on two liters. So that's a little example of using your clinical judgment identifying, recognizing cues, and analyzing cues. Good for you. All right, so now um, o O900, oxygen increased to 2.5 liters to keep that pulse oximetry between 91 to 94. So it is, a, um, I guess you would say it's an inferential um, piece of data that there is an order set parameter to keep the pulse ox between 91% and 94%. We see increased fever is told. We, uh, the nurse administered levofloxacin, that respiratory fluoroquinolone infusion per order, one of those first line medications for COPD exacerbation. Wheeze persists all lobes, tolerated 250 mils of water. That's good. We need this patient to be hydrated and to actually help to liquefy those secretions. And a sputum sample was sent to lab for probably for um, culture and um, an investigation of susceptibilities or sensitivities to antibiotics. Okay, at 10 a.m., decreasing the oxygen to two liters to keep pulse oximetry between 91 to 94%. Hmm, went down. Uh, wheeze persists all lobes, voided 150 mils of clear yellow urine. That's good. Urine is beautiful. Urine is a reflection of renal function. Uh, and denies discomforts. Well, good. They came in short of breath and they're no longer complaining of being short of breath. That's progress. Let's go to our right screen, our right panel, and see what the test question is. So the nurse reviews the client's current assessment data. So that's what we had just done. And isn't it nice that part of the question is to tell you to review this data? And then for each assessment finding, click to specify if the finding has improved has declined or remains unchanged. So we're thinking of taking our 10 a.m. data, that temperature has definitely changed, uh, heart rate changed, respiratory rate changed, uh, blood pressure changed, saturations changed, and oxygen have changed. I didn't give you the exact answer yet because we have it on the next slide. Okay, so that temperature has improved, less fever. Heart rate has improved. We're now within normal range between 60 and 100. Blood pressure has improved. That's the only one that is lower than a JNC7 or JNC, the Joint National Committee on Hypertension, who asks us to keep blood pressures less than 140 or less than 150, depending on which um, version you're adhering to. Uh, pulse oximetry. So we see they came in at 88 and they're now 94%. And we have that inf inferential or inferred parameter to keep between 91 and 94%. So that's improved. Uh, breast sounds. Wheezes have not gotten better. Maybe they've been, you know, there might be incremental, but not so much that the wheezes have resolved. So that's why we're saying unchanged. And then that oxygen need. Why is oxygen at two liters improved? Well, over time, we see that um, we were first on room air and then on two liters. And so now we're on two liters. So why is that improved? Well, there was a time between, and that's another piece of information about trend items over time. We had to go up for a while, but we no longer need to keep them at 2.5. We now were able to lower or titrate to two liters. In our rationale, so in the setting of COPD exacerbation, the nurse conducts an assessment. When answering a standalone trend item, be sure to recognize and then analyze cues over time. That's ultimately what they're trying to get to you to demonstrate in your clinical judgment. As I said, your clinical judgment 
over your shift. You know, you might be told the status of your patient at the start of your shift, but now you have to take care of this individual for either eight or 12 hours. And are you going to be the person that recognizes when small changes happen? Easier to resolve small problems than it is a rapid response or cold situation. Remind yourself that data trends are the focus of the question. Enjoy your clinical judgment abilities, flexing your, their muscles as you consume the information within the left panel. Really the emphasis I'm trying to get you to do is spend, dwell within that left panel. You'll then turn your attention to the right panel armed with information so that you can answer the posted question. Be proud of your increasing skill to recognize and analyze cues. Watching information jump off the screen is a reflection of your ability to recognize and analyze cues. The current assessment data statement prompts you to review the latest set of data for comparison to earlier measures. So where it says the current assessment data would mean that you would pick what's most recent now as compared to the trending information from earlier. Think of yourself in clinical when you go and tell your clinical instructor a set of vital signs. And the, the instructor might say, okay, that blood pressure, uh, where was he at the last reading? And if you didn't notice that, you know, you're just like, oh, why didn't I, why didn't I write that down? Why didn't I compare it? When you start to build that judgment, that clinical judgment, uh, you are demonstrating your skill of clinical judgment. All right, I use the same scenario client, but we're gonna do a different trend item. Your nurse cares for a 71-year-old retired fireman admitted for COPD exacerbation, allergy, none. So that final hour is that latest data set. Temperature, sure, fever was resolving. Heart rate, sure, it's now within normal range. Blood pressure, sure, it's now within normal range. Pulse oximetry, sure, now within normal range of those parameters that they said 91 to 94%, not you or I. We would be uh, greater than 97%, different in the COPD lung setting. Breast sounds are unchanged. We throughout lung fields did not change each hour. So oxygen, supplemental oxygen, that's really what I'm trying to go on here. It, it, the need improved. Why? Because that oxygen titration downward by 0 0.5 mils successfully maintained pulse oximetry parameters. I mentioned this too because I remember in my first year of nursing, 1981, oh my goodness, when I had a COPD uh, uh, exacerbation uh, client who was on, I think he was on. 2.5 liters nasal cannula. He may very well have been on, uh, well, he was up to 2.5, I remember it. And then we did go down. This is actually, this sounds silly, but you might not even believe it. We didn't have pulse oximetry. We only had arterial blood gas. Anyway, the doctor was discussing with me the client situation, and he said to put the patient on one liter nasal cannula. And I said, would it be okay with you if we titrated just to 1.5 liters? He kind of chuckled a little, like, oh, okay, let me indulge you. And he wrote the order to decrease the, uh, the supplemental oxygen to 1.5 liters. That blood gas came back beautifully, beautifully. So consider titrations by 0 0.5 mils in either direction in your COPD client. A little change can make a big difference. All right, so here, this is a one, zero out of one, or zero slash one uh, scoring opportunity. And because you see we have six points, the client, uh, the candidate, you taking this would get six points. Um, I also want to mention about test scoring for a uh, computer adaptive testing. You're, you are going to get 85 questions, minimally. You are also going to get three case studies, minimally. If you go past that, you might get more case studies that are maybe just a test question, or, but you know they won't count, but you minimally will get that. So here you say to yourself, well, if it's 85 questions, do I get six points or six less questions? I just want you to know that when you answer correctly, say we got this one all right, you got all six, 
this is for that one question. And in the computer adaptive um, testing format, what happens is your ability will increase and your next question will become more challenging, which is a good thing. Um, or it will stay the same if you did not get all six, or it may actually go down. So understand it's when you see six points, it's a good thing to get the six points, but it's associated with the computer adaptive testing rather than less questions. I give another URL here because the NCSBN NCLEX does have this site for you to go through a variety of test, next generation test items. And so the site brings you through a variety of test item types using simple questions, meaning that um, you know we all as nurses know these answers, but you get to see them in the different formats. And the benefit is that you gain an understanding of the NCLEX test question item types. The outcome is that you will view item format types that are familiar to you when you actually sit for the exam. All right, so I decided to continue this case study and provide you with a new standalone trend test item. So the nurse cares for the 71-year-old retired fireman admitted for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease exacerbation, no known allergies. And we have laboratory results on the left here. We have WBCs, hemoglobin, hematocrit, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, that's ESR, as a reflection of inflammatory response, nonspecific. And we have ABGs of the pH, this PCO2, and the PO2. So this client, just in the outpatient setting, March measures of last year, September measures of last year, and then this past March measures of uh, lab data. So let's, let's just spend one second, and I know, you know, we're so impatient as just as a people, as a culture today, modern times, that we just want to say, oh, I'll look back over at it when I'm answering the question. Be the nurse that spends one moment to analyze the cues so that they get into your hard drive, if you will. You'll find that when you do this, say you do this before you write your nurse's note, you actually spend less time writing your nurse's note. You're better informed. Um, it's just something I've learned over the years. I know we're busy, but it is time well spent. Okay, so the white blood cells are between five to 10,000, and we see this client always has uh, values that are greater than 10,000, always elevated. Hemoglobins, 14 to 18, and we see a trend that first was in normal range and started to go downward. In hematocrit, similarly, because hematocrit really is a reflection of your hemoglobin, um, we see a downward trend. Um, the ESR should be, if you and I had an ESR done today, we would be less than 20. No, no real big inflammatory response as healthy individuals, but we see our client is always elevated greater than 20 in an upward trend over time. PHs, so 7.35 to 7.45, normal within last year in March, but a downward trend afterwards. The PCO2, uh, 35 to 45, we see elevation on all measures in an upward trend. And then arterial PO2, 80 to 100, we see never quite gets there and has a downward trend. All right, so let's go over to our questions. The nurse assesses the client's most current data. Now, if we're assessing that, you could say, well, let me just look at the, the last column. But it is in relation to or trending from prior measures. Is this patient getting it, improving in health status or declining in health status? So the client experiences a longstanding, and we have to choose um, from the drop down options. Of course, I don't have the software, but the client experiences a longstanding COPD as a chronic inflammatory response as evidenced by the marker, the lab markers of, well, lab markers on the left, the WBCs or platelets or magnesium. And, and then we have new options, the uh, ESR, PO2 or pH. 
I'm not going to answer those. I did the COPD just because we've been working on COPD this whole session. Our second question, prevalence of polycythemia, anemia, or normal chromia increases with age and chronic disease. And then our last question, interpret the latest arterial blood gas as metabolic acidosis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis. Let's go to the next slide for our answers. Okay, so complete the sentences from the drop down options. The client experiences a long standing COPD as a chronic inflammatory response, as evidenced by the lab marker of WBCs. Now, platelets and magnesium weren't even on there. They could very well have been on a longer page, but our white blood cells, you know, you might say, oh, that's an infection. It could also be inflammation. The eosinophilia, the eosinophils are quite elevated, which could bump up the white blood cell count. And then what else do we have as a reflection of inflammation? That ESR, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Again, nonspecific, but will be elevated. In our second question, the prevalence of anemia increases with age and chronic disease. And then interpret the latest arterial blood gas as respiratory acidosis. And as that quick little, you've probably heard this a hundred times, but let's look at it. Um, let's look at the March of this year. pH is down, less than normal range, and the pCO2 is up, greater than normal range. When we see that, that switch, so let me see if I can put one hand. So one hand, when the pH is going down and the pCO2 is going up, in an acidosis, respiratory acidosis. All right, we see um, our bicarb. Let's look at that a little. Oh, I don't have a bicarb. I would have loved a bicarb on here. There's so many, so many lines. All right, next slide. Rationale, this is a multiple response trend item. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is a chronic disease as an inflammatory condition that affects the aging population. Meaning if you have uh, that long-standing lung disease, giving time, uh, you will have advancing uh, inflammation. And so you have to be around long enough to develop this. Now developing anemia or a polycythemia, you may remember when somebody is hypoxic, initially hypoxic, their red blood cells, they'll make more red blood cells to carry around more hemoglobin as a compensatory measure. But there's a limit to that. You have someone with COPD for decades, they, they don't maintain that polycythemia. So developing anemia or polycythemia depends on the balance between that inflammatory stimuli and hypoxic stimuli, which of course we see in our COPDers, their, their hypoxia should initially uh, prompt this polycythemia, but ultimately remember the prevalence of anemia in the general population increases with age. So over time, um, similarly, anemia is more common than polycythemia with advancing age. And you probably know this as anemia of chronic disease. All right, and then the answer responses are not too challenging in this example. In general, I tend to really stick with what the NCSBN does too. Let's show you how to answer these as a trend item. This question will provide a good representation of reviewing clinical information and then using your clinical judgment to answer appropriately, building skill on demonstrating clinical judgment. So in our case study su uh, summary, Here's what we've learned. A standalone trend item consists of clinical information within the left panel, and you have to spend some moments there to recognize cues and analyze those cues. And then there'll be a single question within the right panel, and ultimately, when you are answering your questions, understand every question was written with this uh, NCSBN's clinical judgment measurement model to recognize cues, to analyze cues, to prioritize your hypothesis, to generate solutions, to take actions, and to evaluate for effect. 
So the client needs table on page five of the provided URL test plan provides a breakdown of the percentage of items within each client needs category. And today we, we uh, placed our standalone trend test questions likely to fit the reduction of risk potential category. Uh, suggest that you look at the 2023 next gen test plan, just to familiarize yourself. I gave you the URL again here. So understand, I think we all understand that this is high stakes. Well, anyway, I plan to build more test examples, but I need you to subscribe and press like to help build this channel so I can keep going. All right, well, make a nice day. Bye-bye.